So all I can talk about is a trend that I am seeing that I think is an important one that has, has bearing on this nexus discussion. Um, while we were working with uh, World Economic Forum, of course, there were, uh, there were other groups. The UN Global Compact has the CEO Water Mandate, which is an interesting group that uh, I think has put out some very interesting guidelines for companies over the last uh, few years. One of the most important documents they've written are public policy guidelines. So these are guidelines for the private sector to engage in water policy with decision makers. Now, again, think about five or six years ago, people weren't thinking about this. And certainly, while companies have engaged in policy for years, it's usually been in a very uh, selfish and negative way, not in a way in the public interest. And so this is a real shift in thinking. But to me, it's part of this urgency and need for tools and thinking around how do we start to bridge the gap to the outside world? And to me, it signals a significant shift. For years, environmentalists like myself and organizations have been focusing on eco-efficiency. We've been focusing on the question of what is my impact as a company? And what Wood of Food and Energy does is it shifts that completely to the outside world and says, how am I impacted by the failure of the management of these public goods? Risks to my supply chains, risks to financial investments, risks to downstream communities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So companies say all the time, I may have a super efficient factory, but if I'm in a river basin that is surrounded by poor people or people without access to water or somebody's just putting in agriculture without any good planning, actually I have very, very high risk. So they have to know how to engage that. And so this kind of, this is leading to a number of initiatives uh, spurring up, some of them good, some of them bad, uh, from the private sector, looking at these questions in different lenses in different ways. Um, and I've, you know, watched that discussion over years moving again from Tony's theory of virtual water into that water footprint discussion, which quickly moved into uh, the discussion of business risk. Uh, now I can tell you there's a tremendous amount of work on what is my value at risk. How much money do I lose when water stops coming into my factory? Mm -hmm. Or as a mining company, how much, how much do I have in the ground that I cannot get out because I don't have enough water? <coughs> These kinds of questions are really driving that interest in the private sector. Uh, that I think we need to know how to harness, uh, harness better. So the incentives have changed. The incentives for them have moved away from it being a corporate social responsibility issue into one where actually it's getting to the strategy guys. It's getting to the people who understand that actually the long-term growth of us as a company is impacted by these things and how do we respond to that. And I think it's that response question that's really the one that troubles companies. And so I think, again, that's a huge opportunity. So you've probably heard terms like stewardship spur up in the last few years. I think we have to take some blame for that. Apologies. Uh, but I think it's a good framing for what the private sector is trying to do. And it also expresses, again, a beyond efficiency paradigm, which I think is an extremely important part of what we're trying to drive here. If you go back to the six really complex basins that Quentin mentioned, you cannot separate these basins from the private sector whether it's dams, dam financing, agriculture, private sector finance, operational supply chains, factories, markets, they're there. They're in every, every single basin. Uh, and so it's really that lens of, of thinking about how do we understand the economics of these basins, not just from the financing perspective, how much money do we need to build the infrastructure to support water security in this basin, but from the water in the economy perspective of how does water serve the economies of these basins, jobs, uh, uh, GDP, foreign exchange, et cetera. And making those links help us to make better decisions around trade-offs, because fundamentally, that has a lot to do with the decisions that, that are made in these basins going forward. And I think that signals or is parallel at least to a discussion that I hear in the public sector, which is that shift from technical planning to strategic planning. And I think that that shift and that focus on how we start to think about water uh, plays into the hands of the role that we can bring the private sector into those debates. Um, I may have mentioned this before, but I think that there's some really interesting discussions going on in the sustainable development goals process around the role of the private sector, uh, new visions for partnership, new PPPs, uh, German Development Bank and other development banks coming up with water stewardship facilities, um, new asset classes being talked about in financial circles around water stewardship. So th there are signals coming from the market that actually could fuel this if we, again, think about putting it in the right direction. Um, so 
the long-term risk of business, I think, offers us some significant opportunities. I think in the time that Tony and I spent trying to uh, talk to the ag guys about water, things have changed. I think the agricultural sector, not just from the companies that sell agricultural products, but the big, the big middlemen, the ABCDs, the guys who really control food trade, um, their interest is still not where I'd like it to be. I think you'd agree, Tony. Uh, it's changing over time. Uh, but I think that their ability to hedge and their failure to really have that reputational risk uh, is one of the things that doesn't incentivize them. However, I do think the financial signals and actually their buyers, the, the big uh, food companies of this world who do want to make pledges and sustainability claims and uh, manage risk better are putting pressure on them. So we'll see how that changes over time. Uh, the big, the big uh, unknown to me and many others is the energy sector and the private sector and the role they will play going forward. Um, I think, uh, again, they are driven mostly by purchase power agreements, the fact that they have to get a certain amount of energy into the market at a certain price, and disruptions to that, of course, are their risk. Uh, the water risks of that, of course, come through uh, water flowing through dams or through cooling of, of power plants. Um, so, you know, we have, to un we have to unpack a lot more that energy incentive to get them to be more in tune with, I think, um, that basin perspective. To James's point, not all energy looks at that scale, perhaps uh, dams being the exception. I think we've seen some really interesting movements in the energy sector, though, through the hydro hydropower sustainab sustainability protocol, excuse me, uh, with the International Hydropower Association. Uh, a lot of work on the financial side on energy. Um, the International Council for Mining and Metals have just come out with a really progressive water stewardship strategy that I, that I uh, suggest you look at. And even IPECA, the industry group around uh, water and gas sector, is starting to ask some really interesting questions about uh, their members' future and, and water policy. So I think as we take this whole, net, uh, this whole network forward and uh, I think about my role in this, uh, not being a researcher by day, um, it's really about how we do bring these connections into these dialogues. Uh, the only way we're going to affect policy is by engaging power, and private sector is certainly that. If we leverage it correctly, I think we can incentivize uh, better policy outcomes in the long run. If I've got a few seconds to wrap up, I think working closely with the private sector requires patience and a very thick skin, I can assure you. Uh, it, it leads to very frank dialogue, uh, which is healthy on both sides. It's certainly not what a lot of people perceive uh, of NGOs getting cuddly with, with companies just to take money. It's, it's absolutely not about that. It's about engaging power. But it means we have to shift them away from CSR. CSR is interesting, but it's ad hoc. It's not strategic and it's not long term. So stewardship, to me, promises a, a, a better, more strategic future for companies. Um, it's going to require watchdogs. Um, moving companies into public policy dialogues makes a lot of people very uneasy and it's going to have to be watched very, very closely. Uh, the, the guidelines from the CO mandate are probably a good guide to kick off that debate. Um, we're going to need to challenge perceptions. I mean, people have a hard enough time with water utility companies providing water, let alone uh, other companies sitting around the table. So there's a lot of challenge, uh, challenges ahead in that sense. Um, and we're going to need some strong rules of engagement. We're going to need to really understand and we're going to need to help the public sector know how to negotiate better with the private sector on these debates.